On tonight's programme, we put taxi firms to the test. Can I order a wheelchair accessible cab, please? To see how tricky it is for people with disabilities to get a cab. That's shocking. That's really shocking. First, though, travelling by taxi is something most of us take for granted. But how easy is it if you're in a wheelchair? We sent Omar to investigate. Aisha Khan lives in Newport, South Wales, and attends Colleg Gwen's Cross Keys campus full time. I really enjoy it. It's a really good college and really interesting course. I have a group of friends. Um, I, I sit with them in class and I'm always with them on break. Although born with spina bifida, Aisha is keen to live as independently as possible. I'm 21 now. At that age, everyone wants to do whatever. <laughs> Go out, talk to people. I, I want to do the same. Aisha lives in the Pill area of Newport with her mother and also campaigns for wheelchair users' rights. But for Aisha to be independent, she needs one thing, access to taxis. For me and you, that might seem like something we take absolutely for granted, but for disabled people, it can be a real issue. It's hard trying to get a black cab because you've got to book in advance. And other times, um, there's problems with fitting me in the actual cab. And there's others who will just say no. So some drivers will just say, I can't help you. No. And then um, some will just drive off. And on top of this everyday discrimination, Aisha suffered a painful injury when a hackney cab driver braked hard on the M4 whilst failing to secure her wheelchair. I hurt my back, my neck. I didn't use that anxiety till then. Halfway through the course, um, I had to leave and have a year off. You won't see me in a black cab no more because of that. Aisha and I met up with some of her friends to see what they think of her treatment at the hands of some taxi drivers. Is it really unfair, do you think, that it's hard for Aisha to socialise with you and to see you? Yeah, I feel really bad for Aisha. Well, she hasn't had the same opportunities as all the other students. I think it's found it really hard like, for her to socialise with us, but we encourage her to come out. We decided to do an experiment to test whether passengers with disabilities really are at a disadvantage when it comes to getting a cab. Well, hi there, can you give me the price for a taxi, please? Can I order a wheelchair accessible cab, please? We picked seven taxi firms, large and small, at random. Do you have someone available now? I ordered it? a regular taxi while Aisha asked for an accessible cab. Let's see how we got on. OK, thank you for your help. So Aisha, they all said that they had someone available straight away. Was it any different for you? Yeah, a lot said there's no cabs around to take me. One even suggested that I bring someone else. So you're saying that a lot of the companies said there was no one available and one company even said they'd rather you go to a competitor. Yeah. Rather than they take your business. Yeah. That's shocking. <laughs> That's really shocking. If this was a real situation where you needed a taxi, we don't know if you'd even be able to get one. Mm. I'm really shocked to hear that. Up until now, there's been very little people like Aisha can do if they feel they've been discriminated against by a taxi driver. But earlier this year, a change to the Equality Act 2010 made this kind of discrimination illegal. Drivers who refuse to transport wheelchair users or try to charge them extra now face a fine of up to a thousand pounds and could even lose their license. The main problem is that this legislation only applies to registered drivers of accessible vehicles who are on the council list, known as the Section 167 list. Now, the legislation doesn't force councils to even maintain such a list. It just recommends that they do. We contacted all 22 local authorities in Wales and discovered eight councils had published their Section 167 list by the October deadline. Six councils intend to publish their list by the end of 2017. And eight councils don't plan to publish their lists until after the new year. It's a situation that's left leading disability rights activists like Doug Pawley angry. 
He feels the new law only goes part way to solving the problem. Doug, here's what I don't understand. Why doesn't the government just make it mandatory? Why doesn't it make it a cast iron law? It's been on the statute books since the Disability Discrimination Act in 1995, but was never actually started until 2017. So it's been 22 years, and now that it is in place, it's fundamentally flawed and a half-hearted attempt. But you might almost get the impression that they're not really bothered about enforcing disabled people's rights. Aisha's home city of Newport is one of the areas that has a list of accessible taxis. Which means, if she suffers discrimination in future, there is at least a means of seeking justice. She's just hoping it'll help change attitudes on the ground. Taxis are really important to me because that's the only way I can get around to college, um, socialise with people. Without that, I'd be stuck. I don't want to go out and have this headache. I just want to be helped. Well, if this is something you've experienced, or if there's anything else you think we should be investigating, give us a call. The lines are open now, or drop us an email to the usual address.